Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and this is going to be a very short, hopefully short, uh, video about discussing the table views in the iOS development. In case you have done the iOS development in the past, like four or five years ago, you noticed and you still might be noticing a few years ago, that creating the table views is essential, but it's not really easy. Segways and a whole lot of things need to be implemented and so many methods. It's not that easy, but in the SwiftUI, it's super easy. So this is your walkthrough guide of doing the table views in SwiftUI the right way and the easy way. The most important thing is in many of the articles, you're gonna see that in the Swift uh, UI, especially, and in the list views, they like to inject too many loops. And again, too many loops in the single scope is gonna have performance issues. We don't want to do that. So in that case, you really want to read the documentation of list views properly and want to do it this way because this is mentioned in there, at least at this time. Okay, so let me show you what we're gonna be building up and then it's gonna be super easy. Again, this is not an app which is gonna win any design awards or anything. If you want to create beautiful apps, I have a crash course in which we have done a pretty good job there. So this is a simple image which we are gonna have. We are gonna have a list of names that we want to replicate inside a table view and that's all what we'll be doing. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just focusing on table views. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna be creating classic single view application. Click on the next. I'm gonna be calling it as uh, simple table views. There we go. I'm gonna be storing that on the desktop. So let's go ahead and create that. There we go. Pretty good. Okay. I am not interested in resuming this one even because I won't be worrying about that one. So first and foremost, I, in most of the cases, what you would like to do is create a model, of course. So let's go ahead and create a new group. Usually models are in their own separate group. There we go. And we want to create a new file. We will be creating a new Swift file, not the Swift UI file. Uh, just wait for a second, we'll be doing that. And friend, and let's just go ahead and call that. There we go. Now this model is gonna have all the data that you expect that you will be using. So let's go ahead and do that. Swift UI, create a simple struct. We will be calling it as friend and make sure this is identifiable. The reason why we want to have identifiable because list view is all about iteration. You will have a single row that you will be trading through and it makes much more easier if your data is having this identifiable. This allows us or this helps us in getting this ID. Come on, not like that getting this ID. In one of the previous video or the crash coursey thing, we saw that we can actually directly use uh, something like UUID and can initialize that whenever an instance of this structure is gonna be created, we automatically have a UUID. In this case, I won't be doing that much. I will be just saying that, hey, this is gonna be a simple integer and that's all I want. Keeping things super easy. Then as of this application, we are having simply a string. We are gonna be calling it as name just like that. So things are super easy in this case. Just wanted to mention that we want to create a model all the time because usually the data is gonna be coming up from any database or online service. And we want to have some kind of structure for that data. That's why, following good practice. Okay, now let's close this model and go into the table view and we will be creating a new file and I'll show you why we are creating this new file. So this is gonna be a simple friend list. Let's go ahead and name that friend list. There we go. The reason for having this friend list separately because sometimes in your application you don't want to uh, see the default table view while just opening the app. Maybe that's your goal, but I just want to do all of this in a separate file so that it's much more reusable. If you want to do all of this, you definitely can go ahead and do all of this uh, into the content view. That's gonna be main file, but I want to keep things separate, simple, cleaner. Okay, let's go ahead and shrink this guy and hopefully we are gonna see the hello world there. But again, we are not much worried about that part. Now let's go ahead and see this friend list and first and foremost, what we want to do is inject some data into this. So again, this is the preview part, this is the actual body, and this is just the import statement. Okay, so let's go ahead and inject some of the data here. Now, interestingly, first and foremost, we'll be creating an array. Let's go ahead and say we are gonna be creating a simple war, my friends, that's good enough, and we'll be directly creating an array. Surely you can argue me here that this is not a proper way of creating the array. We should have a type being defined like view or what we did in the model but that's okay, in this case it's fine. So we're gonna have a friend, please suggest me, there we go, ID is gonna be one, 
and the name is gonna be any friend name that you can come up with putting up a comma okay and I'm gonna be uh, copying this value and uh, empty collection literal requires no I'm not empty collection this is something so having four five maybe okay so two three four and five and let's fill this up with the name let's call it as not Jed Jeff yeah, of course, Jed can be my friend, no problem in that. And Ross can be too. And maybe Joey. There we go. So now we have some data. And what we want to do with this data, we want to iterate this data later on in the table views. First and foremost, what's the core essential thing of a table view? A single row. Let's go ahead and create that single row. Let's go ahead and go like that. So we'll be saying a structure. We will be calling it as list row. And that's going to be of type, obviously, view. Okay, coming back here, we want to create a body in it. So we're going to be saying a body with some view, just like that. Okay, now, however you want to craft your body is totally on you. And you can spend a really good amount of time in here. I'll be doing this rapidly and quickly with the edge stack. We'll be having a text in this first and foremost, hard-coded value. This is always how you want to build up these views hard-coded values. Later on, we'll be discussing the things. Then we need some of the images as well, but right now I don't have any image, but I have already exported those image, which I just showed you. And feel free to use any image. It's not gonna be bothering you much. These ones actually are gonna look good. So let's go back. And there we go. Yep, this is where we are. So into the image, what did we call our image? IMG, ah, good name. So we'll be going for the image. And IMG, there we go. Looks good. Resume. And uh, we want to see this friend list view. Okay, we didn't actually call it up. That's why it says hello world. We should be executing the list row here like that to see it. Good enough, but not good enough. First and foremost, this image needs to be resizable. There we go. And it should have an aspect ratio of dot fit, not fair, dot fit. And we will be putting up a frame on it uh, where we will be saying, hey, your max width, max width can be just 30, too small, 40. Okay, I'll work with 40. Now, obviously, we want to separate them apart. So here comes a nice thing which Swift UI gives us, which is spacer, almost like a flex box, surely modifiable. But I think this is going to just do the job. Surely that's going too far away, but table view is going to take care of that. Okay, now we have these data looking great. Now we want to inject this list row, this data into this list row. Okay, so how we're going to do that, especially taking the advantage of this last guy here. Okay, so. First and foremost, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating an array on which all the values can be stored and we can iterate through over it. So follow me along. Inside this here, we'll be saying is a friend to invite. Assume that this is a friend invitation application. Friend to invite, which is gonna be having a type of array and all the values will be of type friend. Okay. Now, coming up onto the point that how we can actually use this one here. First and foremost, we need to learn how to pass the data because that can be really, really tricky in this case. So notice here, there is an array at the bottom. When you will try to fix this, this is gonna say that, hey, first and foremost, in the previews, I'm passing on, I'm previewing this friend list, which is this guy, okay? That's important step. Now it's saying, pass me the friend to invite because that's what this is here that we can iterate through over it. And you need to pass on the array of friend. Remember, we have already created this. So we are gonna copy this, remove this, paste that. Now what is happening, this data gets passed to friend to invite and automatically is available here in this case. And now I can actually iterate through over it. So for first and foremost, what I can do is I can go ahead and remove this and I can say, hey, I want to have a list view. So there we go. Now, if you remember in one of the previous video, I told you that these edge stacks and list view, almost all of them can be worked with this property like constructor thing as well, or directly as well. List view, we definitely want to go with this way. The reason for that is I want to pass on this exact value here. 
When I pass on this exact value, I don't need to use an additional loop because this is how the list is actually designed. Okay, and now it's really super easy. I can simply say friend in list row. So this is what I want to iterate through and that's it. That's all literally I have to do here. Now let me try to resume this and we are gonna be seeing the list views. So there we go, how easy it was. And you can see the lines here. This is exactly the table view. But right now we are not all done. We are not all done. We want to, don't want to create a dumb component where it always says the hard coded value. So we need to inject some of the values here. So let's just say we expect that whenever this component is gonna be used, there is going to be a variable, let's call it as each friend is gonna be passed to me. That's gonna be of type friend. Now I can use this each friend and how many values or whatever the values you have here, you can access them through the dot. In this case, I have just one for simplicity's sake, but we can use it, we can use it, you got the point. Now the problem is in the list row, you're not passing it. So if I try to fix this, it says, hey, you need to pass it on and that should be of type friend. And I know this friend is gonna be serving the job. This is almost like a for each loop. Come on, don't do this, there we go. And once I save this and try to resume this build, now it's no longer a dumb component. It's following and it's iterating through the values. So nice. Now what additional we can do is if you want to make it like a old school style table views, you can actually cut all of this and can place it into a navigation view. There we go, navigation view. And the advantage of having this navigation view is it gives you a top, a heading and stuff like that. So we can do something like uh, navigation bar title, which can be of type text. And I can say uh, friends, ah, double quotes, forgot that. There we go, nice and easy. Shortly we can change the background colors and colors of rows and everything. Can make it all the way from left to right or simply spacers, however you want to go with that one. But there we go, this is your brief tutorial about how to create a table views in the Swift UI in the most easiest manner. Now make sure you understand that the reason why I have created the model and additionally this, I could have done it more simpler, but because I want to replicate a scenario where you might be getting some values from the database, for that you have created a model and I've inserted the values in here. Once the values are dumped down into an array, we can use this list view. Notice we haven't used any explicit for or for each loop. This is how it is designed the list and this is how it is meant to be used, okay? Again, surely documentation might change and in that case, I'll make another video, but this is all fine. So there we go, your short and simple and sweet video about Swift UI's table views. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I come up with a whole lot of videos almost every week and you're gonna have so much fun here. So hit that subscribe and in case you like the video, hit that like too and I'll catch you up in the next one.